All right, welcome back, everybody. It is time now for our Spotlight uh, series right here on Now. And uh, this morning, we're going to be chatting with the EMA. So from the EMA, we are speaking with the Managing Director, who is Hayden Romano. We are also going to be speaking with Nadia Nanan. And Nadia is a Senior Environmental Education Officer at the same EMA. Good morning and welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And, and thank you for having us. Oh, thank um, you we want to say that, that, that we're in a celebrate, celebratory mood this morning because the EMA is, is, is celebrating 25 years, having wow. been established in 1995. And we want to celebrate the persons who were there before us. I mean, um, the EMA um, ha has always had distinguished leadership, uh, starting with Sir Ellis Clark, who was the chairman in 1995 when the, the EMA was established. And we had other distinguished people like Professor John Agard, uh, um, Vincent Moore, Professor Diane Nar Narayan Singh, um, uh, Alan Bechan. And, and today we have a, a woman chairman in, in Nadra, Natai Gyan, who has been here since 2016. We, we also want to celebrate our former managing directors. I mean, you know, we started off with, with, with Shafiq Sultan Khan, who would have birthed the, the, the EMA in 1995. And then we had um, Dave McIntosh, who replaced uh, um, the only foreigner, a Canadian, Patrice Libola, who, who, who would have been there for a short period uh, in, in, in 1995. And we also had other distinguished people like Jot Singh and Gayatri Badri Maraj. So we want to celebrate 25 years of the EME, and we also want to, to celebrate our committed, dedicated, and passionate staff. And we actually have people who have been there for 20, 25 years. So wow. it's, it's really a celebratory time for the EME. And this evening is more celebrations because at 8 o'clock on TTT, we will be announcing the Greenleaf Awards. And Greenleaf I Awards. surely would like um, uh, Nadia to, to take you through through the Greenleaf Awards. Wonderful. Well, um, congratulations, Thank first you, and Rita. foremost, on 25 years of the EMA. And uh, now let's find out from Nadia about the Greenleaf Awards. Okay. Um, thank you again. Uh, so the EMA um, held its first Greenleaf Awards in um, 1998. So this really um, is a forum to honor those who would have made uh, significant contributions to environmental management and sustainable development in Trinidad and Tobago, um, or may have succeeded in bringing pressing issues um, to the forefront, um, whether it be locally or internationally. So it really, um, Earth Day is fitting to actually use this as a forum, recognizing that you need activism at all levels. So the Greenleaf Awards um, actually has several categories. So it shows the scope and the inclusivity of those who apply. Um, so you have categories such as individual, um, private sector, public sector, the civil society groups such as CBOs and NGOs, um, agriculture. And because we are celebrating our 25th anniversary, um, in 2020, we introduced a new category, um, and that is for individuals who would have succeeded um, in, in bringing um, or contributing to environmental management and sustainable development for 25 years or more. So that is a significant category that we thought we should have recognized right. in celebration of the 25th anniversary. So nominations for the Greenleaf Awards actually started in January. And of course, because of COVID, we, had ha we have had to extend the deadline. So it actually closed on September 30th. And um, we are quite um, happy that we had um, our steering committee who stuck it out with us because for the first time in the history of the GLA, we had to conduct the evaluations virtually. So I just want to say a special thank you to, it is a multi-stakeholder committee uh, consisting of individuals from various government entities, as well as from our civil society 
groups as well. So we had, for example, representatives from the Council of the President of the Environment, our line ministry, the Ministry of Planning and Development, and other agencies such as the IMA, Swim Call, um, the UN representative was from the um, Global Environment Facility, Small Grants Program. Um, so we just want to say a special thank you. Um, out of that process, we had 12 awardees in all, eight from the general category and four from the special category. Um, so tonight, we will be presenting 12 awards um, in the general category. There are four merit awardees. And this is presented to those whose projects would have been deemed worthwhile and worthy of special recognition. So just to simplify, it's like the runner up to the GLA. And of course the GLA would be awarded to those who had made a, a significant outstanding contribution to environmental management and sustainable development in Trinidad and Tobago. And to, to get the members of the public involved, we introduced a People's Choice Award. Um, so we would have posted videos on the eight finalists in the general categories and the video receiving the highest number of likes and views would have been awarded the People's Choice. So, I mean, that adds to the suspense this evening that will be announced at the prize giving um, being aired on TTT at 8 p.m. tonight. Wonderful, wonderful. Now, for 25 years, the EMA has done a lot of work, I would presume, and, uh, but there are still those who don't know exactly what the EMA does. So tell us a little more about the role and the function of the EMA, Hayden. I think, I mean, um, it is, I mean we, we are 25 years old, and now the foundation has been set with respect to environmental management. All the subsidiary legislation the noise pollution control rules, the, the certificate of environmental clearance rules, the water pollution rules, uh, the air pollution rules, um, uh, the, the environmentally sensitive areas and the environmentally sensitive species rules are in place. The last piece of, of, of legislation that is outstanding, of course, is the waste rules. And that is with the chief parliamentary council so we expect that soon, uh, in, in 2021, the waste rules will be law. So the EMA functions as regulator, and I think that is the role that most people see us in. Right. So every time there's a problem out there, whether it's noise, and in many cases, the noise is, 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 is to be managed by others, but the EMA is called, and, and of course, the EMA, is, the EMA answers all the calls, right. and we try very hard to, to get in contact with whether it's the police or, or, or a regional corporation or the town and country planning uh, the division using our coordinating function to, to, to get a response to, 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 to complainants. Um, however, our public education function, which we've been doing so well for the last 25 years, all the work that we're doing in schools. I mean, um, um, a lot of the school children would, would understand uh, people like Nadia and, and, and the public education team doing a lot of work out there. Our eye care project, which is an EMA project, is, is doing a lot of work with respect to recycling. Um, we also have, which was aired on, on TTT last night, um, the IW Eco project, which is doing quarry rehabilitation. Um, there's a lot of complaints about illegal quarrying. There's a right. lot of complaints about um, the, the disfiguring of, of the environment. What we are doing with the IW Eco Project, which is uh, sponsored by the Global Environmental Facility, is giving operators uh, the, the ability to rehabilitate quarried out sites. And uh, we're really pleased that the National, the National um, um, Quarries Company Limited has actually grabbed on and, and, and is very much aligned to, to, to what is happening with, 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 with IW Eco. So that has been really a spectacular project. We've also recently uh, completed an ecological risk assessment of, of the Gulf of Faria, 
which is really a first time project where we were actually looking to see what are the challenges in the Gulf area. And, um, and th that result we will be uh, presenting to the general public very soon um, so that we will have the science uh, with respect to, 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 uh, to, 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 to uh, investigations. So, so yes, the EMA is regulator, but the EMA is so much more. The EMA is educator. The EMA is, is, is project manager slash facilitator. Um, the, the, the EMA is, is, is partner because we partner with so many agencies. Um, the, 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 the EMA, uh, you know, doing science right now with respect to our air pointers uh, because we have the air pointers um, in, um, which is measuring air quality in Tobago, in Port of Spain, in uh, Point Lisas, in San Fernando, and, and soon in Point Fortin. So, so the EMA does so many different things, and, and, and sometimes it's, 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 it's a challenge because people feel we're only there to deal with complaints, mm. and, and, and that is just one of our roles. Now, when it comes to uh, future roles, do you see the EMA going in the, going in the direction, partnering with law enforcement to, become, to also have a role of enforcer? Well, the EMA is enforcer, but the EM, EMA enforces under the Environmental Management Act. And we do have an environmental police unit. And the environmental police unit will be enforcing under the Environmental Management Act. And really, the boundaries of the act is really specific. Yes, they have police powers, but when they are working with the EMA, they are working through the EM Act and the EMA's powers. And um, in many cases, in accordance with the Act, we go to the Environmental Commission. So our first port of call is supposed to be the Environmental Commission. And, and of course, I think more is happening in terms of more people are going towards the Environmental Commission, but I think that also needs to be heightened. Agreed, agreed 100%, you know, because we do see in many cases individuals, even businesses and companies still irresponsibly disposing of waste. Well, not even disposing, they're just leaving it right there, uh, you know, to cause more harm to the environment and to the public as well. Um, what can we do as individuals if we were to witness that type of um, action by businesses, by individuals? What can we do, you know, uh, with regard to the act that is in place and the EMA that enforces that act? Well, I think the first thing we need to do, because um, if, if, if somebody's littering, because remember there is a litter act, and, and, and people need to report uh, uh, companies and um, individuals uh, to the regional corporation or the police to enforce the litter act. I think in many cases the challenge is that um, we don't know exactly who has done it, um, so we need to see the person um, littering um, to, 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 um, to, to enforce the law. And, and I think that's in many cases where the challenge comes. Um, but the EMA really, um, until the waste rules are important, and the waste rules is not really for litter, eh? the waste rules is, is, is to regulate um, 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 uh, company waste. I mean, because there are thresholds uh, when the waste rules are, 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 are put into place. So, 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 litter act is what is what deals with waste, and, and I'm sure there are other the, the other pieces of legislation. Similarly, with, with the noise, I mean, the, the, the pieces of legislation really is the is the summary offences act, and and that is what the police is supposed to be enforcing um, noise pollution with. Right, wonderful. Now you mentioned earlier, Nadia, that uh, you are involved in uh, education through the to, through the school program you have as well. Are you also engaged in educating adults? Because it seems that many adults still need education when it comes to uh, the environment. Okay, yes, so the, the EMA is, it is one of our core functions and we are mandated to um, implement programs, develop and implement programs across the board. So from preschool age, straight up to adults. And we also categorize it according to different sectors. So we'd have programs that will target schools and other educational institutions 
but then there are programs that would also target um, the corporate sector and industries recognizing that they are a core stakeholder with respect to the regulation part of it. And then of course, there is the general public um, who through their everyday practices need to have a basic understanding of um, their impact and their actions on the environment. And that really is, is the, the genesis of environmental education where you get them from a point of being aware of issues, having uh, an informed um, way of understanding those topics and then feeling empowered to act in a positive way. So that is why days like Earth Day are very important because it acts as a motivator, a mobilizer to bring greater understanding and propel that action. And uh, back to you, Hayden, uh, let's speak a little bit about the future. As it is already known, Trinidad uh, has one of the highest um, carbon waste per capita, you know, uh, the carbon footprint, rather, per capita in the world. Um, when it comes to the future plans of the EMA, are there anything, uh, is there anything in blueprint or anything uh, in the works right now to have recycling be a more widespread part of our practices here in Trinidad and Tobago? as mandated by any of the acts or, or any of the future plans of the EMA? Well, of course. I mean, the future really depends on us. I mean, we, we have to, to take responsibility, all of us, for the future. With respect to recycling, um, the, the expectation is that the eye care project, which is a, um, a, 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 a collection project and really paving the way for recycling culture will continue and will ensure that, 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 that we move to a, a more circular uh, economy where reuse is, is, is part of our daily lives. Um, and, um, and the expectation is that, 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 that hopefully we will see uh, some developments um, with respect to recycling um, during the course of this year. Um, the, 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 the other thing that, 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 that is happening um, is, 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 is energy efficiency and, and, and the change of energy to renewables. And, and we're seeing those projects come into fruition. Um, so I think, I mean, we're seeing more people uh, driving hybrid cars and CNG cars because that is where the world is going. We will have to do everything differently. We will have to drive differently in terms of the cars that we drive. We will have to be using different, uh, different forms of, 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 of energy as the world moves to carbon zero. And, and we need to have those timelines. And I think, I mean, not think, I, I know the, 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 the Ministry of Planning and Development is working on timelines. I mean, so, so, so we are doing that. Um, in, the, in, in the national environmental policy, and it's Trinidad and Tobago um, um, national environmental policy, there are priorities and there are um, the strategies that need to, to, to happen to take Trinidad uh, into the fourth industrial revolution. So we, we, we don't have a choice. Um, we, as the rest of the world, need to be doing things differently. And, 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 and as the time draw nigh, I mean, it's, it, it, it is coming upon us quicker because uh, some climate change is, 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 is real. I mean, climate change is happening. It's happening throughout the world. Yeah, that's right. All it takes is that two degrees, right? Uh, with that, I want to congratulate you again on 25 years of the EMA. Uh, happy World Mother Earth Day as well. I want to thank you for your time this morning, Hayden Romano, Managing Director of the EMA. I want to thank you as well, Nadia Nanan, Senior Environmental Education Officer of the same. Thank you for your time this morning and congratulations once more. All right, uh, that was our chat with the AMA and you can get more information on their website and Facebook page and the like. But for now, we're going to take a short break and come back with much more right here on the Now Morning Show. Stay with us. All right.